Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We are getting ready to jump into our episode 5 of our series, Doomed to Repeat. We're talking about the children of Israel and their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. If you hadn't noticed, we have been, through these episodes, we've actually been going into reverse. We talked about the end from the beginning and now we're working our way back to the beginning when they initially left Egypt. And so today we're going to be looking at right when they departed Egypt and the things, the events that happened during that time period and how God did his thing during that time period. <laughs> this episode is entitled, The Look of Love. The Look of Love. And God will accomplish his, excuse me, God will accomplish his purposes because of his unfailing love. Because of his love that he has for us and towards us, he will accomplish his purpose. And that gives us the reason or that gives us the safety that we can praise God because we know that his love for us is unconditional. It never stops. And so what we're going to look at today is how that love looked in this situation with the children of Israel. Remember that when we talk about the word doomed, doom has the connotation to uh, mean to, to, to condemn or uh, to... to point towards certain death or destruction. It's an inescapable outcome. It's, it's ill-fated. It, it's just not good. And as we've been looking through this series, we've seen that Israel would constantly do something to cause themselves to get in uh, predicaments that were not good predicaments. And they kept repeating it and kept repeating, but God was faithful throughout of this. So we're going to talk today about the look of love. The previous episodes that we've had, we, the first episode was called The Beginnings. The, the next episode we looked at was called Choices. Then we talked about the proof is in the test. Last week we talked about discussions have results. And here we are today, the look of love. We're going to be in Exodus, the 14th chapter, starting at that 10th verse. Now, I have to give a little, little bit of what happened so that we can kind of get where we are. The children of Israel have just left Egypt. They, have, they are on their way to the promised land. Pharaoh has finally conceded to let the Jewish people go. And so they're going, and as they're going, Pharaoh is sitting there, starting at verse 10. And Pharaoh's sitting there, and he's like, I don't know why I let these people go. I'm going to go get them. I'm going to bring them back. Those are our slaves. We're going to go get them and bring them back. And so here we go into verse number 10. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes and beheld. The Egyptians were marching after them, and they feared greatly. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You, only, you have only to be silent. Even in the middle of 
them being rescued, them going through this process of being delivered, they still did not trust God. But God loved them so much that he said, I want to provide for you the promise, the covenant that I made with your fathers. This is my desire. This is what I want to do for you. And they hear the Egyptians coming after them. They say, they, they, they talk to God's representative, Moses. They say, we, just, we already told you we didn't even want to do this. Oh, man, look at this. They getting ready to come after us. They getting ready to kill us. And then, oh, man, you, man, Moses, you just jacked this up. You just did this to us. You must, you must be on Pharaoh's side because you're trying to get us killed. There wasn't enough room for graves in Egypt that you just had to bring us out here so we can get killed out here and get buried out here in the desert. Oh, oh man, Moses, you just... But the one thing that I love, loved about this, not the fact that Moses said, don't worry about it. God, you know, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see them again. You know, none of that. I loved what he said in verse number 14. He said, the Lord will fight for you and you only have to be silent. And as I was reading that, I kept thinking about is sometimes you just have to shut everything out and go to your radio and turn your radio to KYMS turn your radio to KYMS that radio station is keep your mouth shut <laughs> keep your mouth shut that's all he said. Just be quiet and let God do what God is going to do. Because we only see this little small part of everything that's going on. And we think that our little small piece of the puzzle is the totality of the portrait. But God is working things all over. He's putting an entire portrait together and we just have a little small spot on there but to us our small spot is the entire portrait so Moses had to say listen God's going to fight for you God's got this already all set up just tune to your radio station KYMS and so when they do this type of thing, they get an opportunity to see that even despite their weaknesses, even despite their not seeing the entire picture, that God delivers them. And, and God was not doing this because they deserved it. But because God is faithful to his love toward his people. He made a covenant with their fathers. And God says, because of my unconditional love, because of my word, I am going to cause this to happen. <laughs> so when we can tune appropriately to the proper station of KYMS it allows us to calm our inside it allows us to calm our environment it allows us to just say I'm not going to say nothing I'm just going to see how this comes out and sometimes when we just step back and we just say I'm not going to I'm not I'm just gonna see how this works out that allows God to come in and allows God to move in our circumstances and it allows him to show us that he's got us 
that when we say, I don't have to say how I feel, I don't have to say what I'm thinking, when we're able to submit that and say, I'm going to see what God's going to do, we allow God's unconditional love to be made manifest in our lives, to appear in our lives. And so then we get to see the look of love. And so, walking through this desert, the children of Israel, not sure where they were going, but they were just walking through the desert. And so, as they're walking and they hear the Egyptians coming, they, they, they get all that's going on and, oh man, oh, we're getting ready to get killed. Oh, why would you do this to us? Moses gets up and says, the Lord's going to fight with you. Go to your radio station, KYMS. And what ends up happening in verse number 15 is this. It says, the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Wait a whole one minute. Whole one minute. Because I didn't tell you what was going on. They got two mountain ranges on each side. They got the Red Sea in front of them. They got the Egyptians, but they ain't nowhere to go. So Moses says, all right, everybody quiet. Lord, what are we going to do? He said, why are you talking to me? I told y'all to go forward. So Moses says, all right, we're going to go forward. Verse 16 says that Moses lifts up, he tells Moses, lift up your staff, stretch out your hands over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so they shall go in after them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. So, he says, go forward. They're like, what? There's the, oh, there's the sea in front of us. Moses holds up the staff. God comes in, separates it so they are walking. They ain't even got to walk through mud. They're walking on dry ground. They're walking through this environment. They're walking through this. And they're just walking. They're walking. But I'm quite sure the folks that saw the Egyptians that are on the end start wondering a couple things. Like, these guys getting close and if this is opening up for us, what's going on? Hey, oh man. I'm going to be the first to go. But God said, our, this, he told Moses the entire plan. He says, listen, we're going to open up this sea. I'm going to get you guys across the sea. When I get you guys across the sea, then the Egyptians are going to be gone. You're not going to see them anymore. So God has already said the plan. His plan is already in place. And so they're going through. They're walking through. Um, let, let's go ahead and read some more of this. Uh, verse number 21. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, verse number 19. Then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. So what God did is he, the, the, the pillar, of, he did it, had a, a pillar of a cloud during the day that led them in the direction that they need to go. Then it would turn to fire at night. So what he did is he said, okay, y'all keep going forward. He says, I'm going to go to the back and I'm going to be a separator between you and the Egyptians. So the folks in the back wouldn't lose heart. So they say, oh, God's in between us. So they start going all across the sea. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, number 19, then the angel of God who was going before the host of Israel moved and went behind them and a pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel 
And there was the cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without coming near the others all night. So this cloud just stayed in the way, blocked them throughout the whole time period. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. They're walking through one of the first aquariums. You know how you go when you go to some of these aquariums where you can go in and you see the fish on this side? See, God made the very first one. <laughs> yeah, so they got to see water on the left side and the right side. And it says, The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watched the Lord in the pillar of fire and a cloud, looked down on the Egyptian forces, and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon the chariots, and upon the horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. <coughs> And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. And so th th this whole situation, God shields them. He keeps them back. He sets up the pillar. Moves it from the front to the back. He sets everything up. He's got this thing under control. The one point that I can pull from that is that not only does God want to lead us, not only does God want uh, His presence to, 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 to guide us and direct us, but it also can comfort, protect, it can minister to us. God's presence because of his love for us, even in the midst of a harsh situation, can provide us what we need to continue on in our situations. And as they have gone through this, as they have fought through this time of not saying anything against God, but keeping their mouth shut and going through and executing what God God was showing his love for them in that he would protect them because his goal, his purpose is to get them to the promised land. Even when they were like, Lord, why didn't you just leave us? He's like, I love you too much to leave you where you were. I want to take you to what I have promised your fathers for you. And we can run with that today. God loves us too much to leave us where we are. Even though when he moves us as he's maneuvering us to a better place sometimes we feel like maybe the old place was the better place but because of God's love for you he doesn't take it personal his unconditional love says that I know you don't totally understand the whole picture but if you stay with me if you stick with me if you trust me I will show you greater things than what you had before. Man, somebody should just clap their hands on that part. That if you trust him, even if you don't, you just say, you know what? I don't see it. I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm unsure. But he says, just shut your mouth. Don't say anything contrary. But continue to walk in where I told you. 
and I will comfort you. I will protect you. I will minister. I will serve you and get you to where it is. Just show that trust. Because his love for us is so great. And that's what his love looks like. His love looks like in the midst of a situation that he's able to comfort us. He's able to move us and simultaneously protect us and cause us to feel that everything is going to be all right. So if we trust in the Lord and we just lock into just saying, God, I, I, I can see that you love me enough that you don't want me to stay where I am, but move me to another person. I mean, not another place to another location and it may not feel to me that this is the right way to move, but you love me enough to not let me stay where I am. But your desire is to move me to the place that you have promised for me. The place that I can become more, I can conform more to the image of Christ. Where I can be a better ambassador of your kingdom. That I can move to where you desire for me to be because of your love for me. <clears throat> now I want us, as God is doing this in our lives, I want us to do the same thing that the children of Israel did starting in Exodus 15. And it says this, Exodus 15 and 1. Then Moses, because this is after they get to see the, Isra the, uh, the Egyptians are no more. They're gone. They have been destroyed. And it says, Exodus 15, verse, starting at verse number 1, it says, Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The floods stood up in a heap. The deep congealed in the heart of the, of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swaddled them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by the strength of your holy abode. I, just like the children of Israel, when God shows that love toward us, and although sometimes it does not look like it's love, it looks like we're going through a situation that is detrimental to us. But as God, can you imagine having to walk and, and go through all this stuff? But God, on the other side of doing what God has directed you to do, He gives you total victory over that which was trying to oppress you. And so we should get like they did in this 15th, verse, 15th chapter of Exodus. They worshipped Him. They just broke out in this song. They worshiped, they showed adoration, they showed praise. They were singing unto the Lord, making a joyous song in their hearts because of what God has done for them. 
we should have the attitude that at all times that I will bless the name of the Lord, that I will give him worship, that I will just magnify him for everything that he has done for me. Uh, this praise, I mean, when, when God does something extraordinary, I, I think it should take us even to a higher level of just worshiping who he is. Just letting everybody know. You know, uh, they have this saying that you should, sometimes you just have to sing like no one's watching. You know, just sing how you feel like singing. Sometimes in your house, I would tell you that sometimes you should just go through and just bless the name of the Lord. Make up your own song. It don't have to rhyme, just as long as it sounds good to you. And just give God the glory. As you, as you, when you go back and look at that 15th chapter, they were just saying, you know, they were just singing. They were like, Lord, you are great. You are wonderful. You are... You know they ain't say nothing about doubting them. They ain't say nothing. They just they were just saying, "Man, God, you are so great. You the God of war. You give us victory. Uh, the Egyptians thought they had us, but they don't. Oh, you know." And they were just having this great celebratory time, magnifying who God is and continues to be the love that God showed toward them and that even when they doubted him he still loved them enough to still accomplish his purpose even though they were speaking slowly against the unsurety of what was getting ready to happen they still did what he directed them to do to show that they shut their mouths and begin to walk like he told them to do and so they did not become consumed about the thing that they saw they became consumed about doing what he told them to do that sounds like walking by faith and not by sight and so as they did this they were just magnifying the Lord just praising God and sometimes even when it's a small thing, we should take time out and say, God, I thank you. Thank you. I remember uh, growing up that you would hear the older folks say, I thank God that I, I was able to rise this morning. Sometimes we just got to do that. Sometimes we just have to thank God for the little things because of his great love for us. What is the look of love? The look of love is unfailing. Always looking to do and bring out the good. That's what love looks like. It looks like even when we slip and fall, it's still there for us. And when we feel like everything else is going crazy, the love, God's love comes in. Even in the midst of us saying, what did you do? Just bring us out here in order for us to die. The love comes in and says, continue to move forward. I got you. And we get on the other side of it. And we see what God has done. And we jump up and we're just like, God, you're so great. You're so greatly to be praised. You're awesome. You gave us the victory. Because... That is what unconditional love does. Even when you're kicking and screaming and doubting. But you're still showing obedience by doing what you, what you said. God still shows his love for us. And we get the benefit of having the opportunity to be the recipients of that type of love. Not only did he do it for the children of Israel, but he did it for us today. When he died on the cross, he gave us a victory that is not only for today, but a victory that is for eternity. And so we should always have a mindset of thanking God. 
Because God's love never fails. God's love is always there for us. And all we have to do is walk in it. Turn our radio station to KYMS and continue to walk by faith and not by sight. And then on the other side of that situation, we'll be able to do just like the children of Israel and bless the name of the Lord. The Bible even says that even when you're going through, you should be blessing. He says, I will bless the, the, the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Paul wrote and said, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you. Thanking God at all times for the gracious love that he's shown toward us. That Christ died for us even while we were yet sinners. Even when we slip and fall, he still loves us. That we can return back to him. And we should be giving him thanks for he is good and for his mercy endures forever. The look of love is the look of victory. The look of love sometimes looks like everything is going to fall apart. But because of God's love, we're able to have victory. The Bible says, uh, Paul wrote, he said that not only are we we're not only victorious, but we're conquerors. Not only are we victorious, not only are we conquerors, but we're even more than victorious conquerors through him that has loved us. Isn't that something? We not only win, but we are loved by the creator of the world. That he loves us enough that he begins a good work in us and he's faithful to complete it till the day of Jesus Christ. The look of love. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he still loves you. His love is not, has no condition in it. All he asks is that you accept what he's done for you. Just like the children of Israel, they accepted the fact that God had brought them out of Israel. And although they doubted that he was able, he still was able to show them that he was. So if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I challenge you today to accept the fact that God loves you enough. To have you listening today. To have you to hear this message. And to touch your heart. That you will accept Christ as your Savior. And to, to bring Jesus into your life. is simple. Romans 10 and 9 says this. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And salvation means that God is rescuing you from the penalty of sin. The penalty of sin is death. God is rescuing you from death. And I'm not talking about death of your body. But I'm talking about an eternal separation from Him. And so we want to operate in the power of eternal things. And so God says, when you accept Christ, you are freed from the penalty of sin, which is death. So, I ask you today, make that confession, make that decision, that Christ will be the head of your life. And if you are one of the ones that have made that confession, that decision today, please let us know. You can contact us at info at godshousecc.com. Let us know. Or if you're on Facebook or the platform, let us know. We have some information that we want to put into your hands 
to help you to navigate the rest of this of your life, the rest of this life on earth, so that you can have victory in your life and in your situations because of your trust in the Lord. Well, friends and family, episode number five is in the books, The Look of Love. And I pray that something was said today that touched you, encouraged you, caused you to want to serve and to magnify the name of the Lord. Remember, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus.